Okay, so we've got our diagram here. Let's just recap what the question asked. Part A said, what's the change in internal energy from A to C? Part B said, how much heat is added going directly from A to C? And part C said, how much heat is added if we go from A to B to C? And we're told that we have one mole of a diatomic gas. Okay, now questions like this are always much easier if we can can use the first law of thermodynamics that the change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. Now in this first case, going from A to C, fortunately we can't use this as we have no information about Q. So while W can be calculated relatively easily, that's not going to help us find the internal energy because this is not the CP case nor the CV case. We don't have constant pressure or volume. So we're going to have to go about this the hard way which is to use the ideal gas law. PV is equal to nRT. We can use this to find the temperature at A and the temperature at C, and then we can use our other equation for the change in internal energy, that it's equal to F over 2 nR times the change in temperature. Okay, so the temperature at A is equal to the pressure at A times the volume at A over nR. The pressure at A here is 5 kilopascals, so that's 5,000. The volume at A is 2 meters cubed. The number of moles is 1, and R is 8.314. So this is 10,000 divided by 8.314. Solving that on the calculator, we get 1,202 kelvins. The temperature at C is equal to PCVC over NR. The pressure at C is 2000 pascals. The volume at C is 4 meters cubed. There's one mole involved and R is 8.314. Solving that on the calculator we get 962 kelvins. Now both these cases are around about 1,000 kelvins, which makes it a bit hard to tell if F is going to be 5 or if F is going to be 7. You wouldn't lose marks for assuming either way, but let's assume that this means F is equal to 7. Now, the temperature at A is higher than the temperature at C, which tells us that the internal energy is actually decreasing. So the change in internal energy from A to C is equal to F over 2, so that's 7 over 2 times N, which is 1, times R, 8.314, times the change in temperature, which is the final temperature, minus the initial temperature. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with minus 6,984 joules. So presenting this answer, we should just give it to two significant figures because it's hard reading very accurately off this graph. So we can write this as minus 7.0 kilojoules. Okay, so that's part A. Now part B said how much heat is added going from A to C. We can't use the constant pressure or constant volume formulas to find the heat because pressure and volume are not constant. So what we'll need to do is use this first law of thermodynamics. We now have the change in internal energy, so if we work out the work, then we can work out the heat. So the work done is equal to negative the integral from VA to VC PdV, which is just the area under this graph here. And the gas is expanding, the volume is increasing, so it's going to be a negative work. So this is minus. Now, to, we can take the average height of the trapezium, the average of 5 and 2, so it's 5,000 plus 2,000 over 2, and then we times this by the width of our trapezium, which is 4 minus 2, or 2, 
those cancel and so we end up with minus 7,000 joules or minus 7.0 kilojoules. Okay, now we've been asked to find how much heat is added. Q is equal to the change in internal energy minus the work done. So in this case we should actually use our exact number here. Minus 6,984 minus minus 7,000. So these add together, they almost cancel out and we end up with 16 joules of heat added. Okay, part C says how much heat is added going from A to B to C. Now there's two ways to do this question. The easy way is to use the first law of thermodynamics. We know the change in internal energy between A and C and that change in internal energy is independent of the path. The hard way to do it is to use C P for this case to get the heat added and then CV for this case. In that case we'd need to work out the temperature at B. So just for completeness let's do it both ways. In an exam I recommend that you use the first way. Okay so Q is equal to the change in internal energy minus W and this is from A to B to C from A to B to C. Okay so we need to work out the work the work done from A to B is equal to minus the volume at A, the volume at B, P, D, V. It's an expansion and it's just equal to the area underneath this rectangle here. So that's equal to minus 5,000 times the width of the rectangle, which is 2. So that's minus 10,000 joules. And then the work from B to C is equal to zero as the volume is not changing. So the work from A to B to C is equal to minus 10,000 joules. So just substituting everything in here, the change in internal energy is the same, the minus 6,984. And the work is the 10,000. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with 3,016 joules, which is equal to 3.0 kilojoules to two significant figures. Okay, so we said that Q going from A to B to C was equal to 3.0 kilojoules. Now let's calculate it the second way just to show you that this way is longer and it's probably not such a good idea. We can work out the heat going from A to B using from A to B we've got constant pressure, so it's N, C, P, delta T. So we need to know the change in temperature between these two. So, so to start with we need to work out the temperature at B, which is equal to P, B, V, B over N, R. The pressure at B is 5000. The volume at B is 4. And this is over 1 times 8.314 which gives us 2,406 kelvins. And now we're told that this is a diatomic gas, so P, P, Cp, and it's at high temperatures, is equal to R plus Cv, which is F over 2R. So this is 7 over 2 plus 2 over 2, 9 over 2 R, which is equal to 37.413 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so Q from A to B is equal to 1 times 37.413 times the change in temperature final temperature is 24,006. The initial temperature, the temperature A, we calculated earlier and we found that it was 1,202. So this is equal to 45,045 joules. Okay, now what we need to do is work out how much heat is added going from B to C. So Q from B to C 
is equal to n, this is the constant volume case, times delta t, cv for constant volume, this is all at high temperatures, so we'll assume f is 7. So we've got CV is equal to F on 2R, 7 over 2R, which is equal to 29.099 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay, so substituting in 1 times 29.099. Now the final temperature was the temperature at C, which we said was 962, minus the initial temperature, the temperature at B, which was 24,006. Substituting in, we end up with minus 42,019 joules. Okay, so Q from A to B to C, we just need to add these two. So this is the 45,000 minus the 42,000. You can see that's going to give us 3,026, which to two significant figures is 3.0 kilojoules. So that gave us the same answer as we got using the first law of thermodynamics. write that neatly. So that gives us the same as we got using the first law of thermodynamics but as you can see where possible use the first law of thermodynamics because it's a much faster way to solve these questions.